All right, welcome back to another Out of the Park video, everyone. For today's video, I'm going to try something a little different. So I'm going to take over the New York Mets. Now, I'm not going to do an entire sim with the Mets. What I'm going to do is review their roster, talk about their strengths and weaknesses, and then make a few moves that I would make with the Mets if I was taking over as their GM in Out of the Park. And now that, that Out of the Park part is key, right? Some of the opinions I have of their roster and players would be different than how I'd evaluate the real-life New York Mets. So quick thing, if you like these videos, you like this channel, do a few things that'll help other people find the videos, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, ring the notifications bell, leave your thoughts in the comments, check the description for other ways you can find more content, other places you can find the channel, etc. Now, for this project, there will be a few rules I'm going to put in place to myself. Like, I don't want to go in and just make 20 roster moves and win every trade with the AI and turn the vets into some sort of powerhouse that would be unrealistic to have happen in real life. So I'm going to limit myself to acquiring three players via trade and signing one free agent before opening day. So I'm going to set the trade difficulty up three notches above normal and also three notches towards heavily favors prospects. I'm also going to limit the teams I can trade with. I can't trade with any NL East teams or other teams I consider contenders, potential playoff teams, or just teams that I think maybe, you know, kind of in their competitive cycle right now wouldn't be looking to deal with the Mets. But if a team isn't on this list, it doesn't mean I don't think they they fall into that category. I just had to draw the line somewhere. So the teams I'm not going to trade with. Are you ready? It's the NL East, the Padres, the Dodgers, the Angels, the Astros, the Twins, the Yankees, the Blue Jays, the White Sox, the Cardinals, the Reds, and the Brewers. All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into the Mets roster. Okay. So here's the uh, Mets lineup. And so a couple quick things. I'm not going to be looking at the 40-man roster here. I think, you know, normally when I set up a team and I have my own sim, I do consider the depth on the 40-man a lot when I'm building my 26-man and where I have good replacements, where I don't, where I need more depth. Just for the sake of brevity, for the sake of not getting too lost in the weeds and keeping this kind of as concise as possible, I'm just looking at the 26-man. And I'm also going to probably focus more on scouting in when I'm talking about these players than I might normally when I'm evaluating my own team because well, one, it's the first season, right? There's no backlog of stats except real-life MLB stats, which are reliable and do tell us things, but I think I rely, you know, I think I trust stats within the game about a player more than the previous real-life stats. So I'll still talk about the stats, but if you watch some myself on how I evaluate players, you might notice I'm talking more about ratings and scouting when I go through the Mets here than I might normally. So let's get it started. Let's go through their starters. James McCann at catcher. And he he's a team captain, which I like. And, you know, he's his catcher rating is high, but his ability is only a 55. You know, as Sergeant Mushroom, the catcher ability is what you, uh, what you want to focus on, as he has shown us with his videos. So I don't necessarily know that I love a guy who I'm paying, what, four years, $40.6 million as a 30-year-old who is only 55 catcher ability. And it's totally unrealistic that the Mets would trade McCann in real life, right? They just signed him. But in looking at this team and his salary and also knowing that he's valued on the trade market in this game, he might be a dude I move on from for a cheaper option at catcher who has a better catcher ability. So... Pete Alonso, obviously staying in the lineup. I love home runs. Who doesn't love home runs? Look at that home run power. S defense sucks at first base. I, I wish we had the DH here, but we don't. And his uh, his bat will make up for uh, any poor defense at first base. It's fine to have a poor defensive first baseman. And then we've got Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil, I mean, this is a potentially elite bat right here. And and he's kind of done it in real life, too. Like, these WRC plus, man, 148, and then in a small sample last year, 124. He can play second base fine. Ideally, I wish he had more range. And I, I wish he could play an outfield position a little better. But he can play second base with how good his bat is. He can play right field with how good his bat is. And... In a pinch, he can he can cover you in left if you need him to, although not ideal. But the focus here on McNeil, and this is a theme with a lot of this roster, according to my head scout, is their, their bats are going to carry them. Their defense isn't great, which isn't how I love constructing a team. I, you know, I, I do want better defense on my ideal out-of-the-park team than the Mets have, but we're working with what they gave us. So McNeil is a clear net positive. He'll be on the team. And then we've got... 
J.D. Davis. Arm is great for a third baseman, which is one thing that's really important. It's really the only place on the field that I think he can play. Let's see. the Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, if you need him in a pinch in the corner outfields, maybe. But third base is really going to be the only place you can play. And I guess you could stick him at first base if you need to. But, again, this bat could be really super good. And the scout thinks he's a league average third baseman. That's okay. We'll take a league average player here who has some pop and can play an adequate third base, hopefully, with that arm. So, again, the defense is a theme here. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be looking to upgrade McCann because I want to upgrade at positions where the defense will really impact the team the most since the team defense is kind of poor in many places. Lindor, what more do you need to say, man? We're good there. Just a great, great player. And then we'll get back to the kind of prototypical Mets player here, Dominic Smith. Looks like he could have an excellent bat, but man, this defense, like, again, wish we had the DH, so maybe we could stick him at first and Alonzo at DH or something, but we don't. Not yet in the NL. So, I, you know, I guess he'll pro- he might be in left field. If he's going to be in our lineup, he's going to be in left field. Or, you know, what are you going to do? Put him at first base and move Alonzo somewhere else? So, you know, just hoping that this bat will carry him and make him a net positive player, which I think it could. But again, defense not ideal. And sticking with our theme... Brandon Nimmo, you know, this is hopefully a guy whose bat will carry his glove in center. 60 range is not adequate in center for a team that I want to build and out of the park, but this is what we've got right now. His bat is really good. I think long term, if I were taking over the Mets, I would be looking to upgrade the center field defense for sure. I don't think within this little uh, game, you know, kind of fun thing that I'm doing, I don't think center field is going to be where I'm going to choose to make one of my limited upgrades, but I would be looking to do that at some point and sticking him in left where where he, you you can get away with this defense a lot more. But bat is good. Hopefully he can uh, hit well enough that whatever uh, whatever he gives up defensively, he more than makes up for offensively. And then in right field, there's our guy, Michael Conforto. I really like Michael Conforto as a player in real life. He's fine as a right fielder. Good with him there. I mean, this bat in real life 121 128 153 wrc pluses i I like him he's clearly going to be the right fielder here and i'm 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 happy about that (laughs) and so luis guillorme who i'm sure somebody will correct my name pronounce my pronunciation on him there uh totally fine as a backup infielder and he bats left-handed which is good for our infield because we got a couple righty bats a couple switch hitters in there who hit better from the right side and he can play all three infield positions. Experience at third base isn't great, but I think he'll be fine at all those positions, and he's a totally adequate utility infielder. Uh, Jonathan VR, uh, you know, okay, so he's here. He's a player who can play second base, uh, maybe can fake it in center and short if you need him to, but the bat isn't very good. Uh, I, I don't know if my New York Mets have a place for Jonathan VR, but he is a switch hitter. We'll see. He might just end up there um, as like a guy that I would upgrade eventually, but maybe not right now. And then in the outfield, we've got Albert Almora Jr. Can play a strong center field. The bat is not very good. No experience in left or center field. No rating there. I don't love that. He'd probably pick it up fairly quickly, but these are the New York Mets looking to win the NL East. We don't want to give up uh, additional runs because Almora doesn't have the experience in left or center. So don't love that about him, but do love that he's righty because the Mets' entire starting outfield is left-handed. And then we've got Kevin Pillar. Of course, of course, VR and Pillar on the same team, you know, testing my muscle memory of, of, of how you say which name. And so, you know, between the two backup outfielders, we don't have anybody with experience in left field. Pillar is fine, you know, as a backup outfielder, I guess. Like, but he's not a great long-term option in center if you need a replacement. But Almora can be that. But he can play right field. Okay, like I don't have a lot of use for Pilar as this Mets team is constructed. I think, you know, when I look at this offense, two areas I'd love to upgrade are a, you know, a fourth outfielder who has experience at all three set, all three positions and can play center field because this outfield defense is just not very good. And a, and, and a right-handed bat at that in the outfield. And then a better catcher in terms of um, catcher ability. So th- those are the two things that stuck out to me. 
as I went through uh, their, their lineup and what I'd do with them. Now, on the pitching side of things, the important thing to remember is we will be getting Carlos Carrasco and Thor, Noah Syndergaard, back to completely useful, you know, that's underselling them. Syndergaard's a really good rotation option. Carrasco is solid in the rotation. They'll both be back by June or July, according to the game. So that's good because we could use those reinforcements. DeGrom, nothing needs to be said about them. him. He's best pitcher in the game, arguably. Stroman, yeah, he'll be in my rotation. Would love to bring back Syndergaard and then maybe trade for a pitcher that bumps Stroman down a couple notches because... Sure, you can have him as your two, but if he's your four, your rotation's even better. And Taiwan Walker, uh, okay. Like, I'm okay with him being a placeholder until the injury injured guys come back, until we make a trade. May, you know, but ideally fifth man or a long man out of the bullpen, I'd much rather see him there. David Peterson is a lefty. Another guy, fine with him as a placeholder while we make trades, while we wait for the two injured guys to come back. He's serviceable. He's fine. And then Joey Lucchese, a lefty, um, you know, I guess he's serviceable if we need him to be. Don't love it, but he's a lefty. And as you can see in this bullpen, we only have one lefty arm. So these two guys interest me in that way, in the fact that I can put them in the bullpen to give us more lefty arms in the bullpen. Back into the bullpen, Edwin Diaz, sure, sold. I would love if he had more stamina so I could put him in the stopper role, which is kind of like a multi-inning closer, but we don't have that right now. That'd be something I'd look to do long-term without when I don't have these move limits. Trevor May, yep, you've got a role in my bullpen. You're cool. You can stay. Robert Giselman, yeah, I would rather you not be my setup guy because you've got above average skills across the board, but you're not dominant. So Giselman's got a spot on my team. Miguel, former Oriole Castro, yeah, dude. Man, the game really loves him. Scout does. Does OSA too? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm cool with Castro, and, you know, he he throws pretty hard. 97. I actually thought he threw harder than that in real life. I'm not sure. But, yeah, Castro can throw in my bullpen. Aaron Loop, by default, as a lefty, will be on this team. He's fine. Uh, wish we had better lefty options. Familia, man, this control and this real-life walk rate... I don't know, man. Like, I'm not sure you're going to make our opening day roster. Jacob Barnes, like, all right. Uh, you know, the movement's average. The control is below average. The stuff is okay. Like, you know, it's above average. Fastball and slider are both excellent. Changeup is all right. Ground ball pitcher, sure. He can be in the bullpen, but he's, you know, I don't want him, like, in the back end of my bullpen. I think where he is is fine. And then Dellen Betances, uh, man, this 35 control. And he's just kind of hasn't been great in real life for a while. It, you know, injuries have caught up to him. I think with how many more lefties I'd like in this bullpen, Betances and Familia might be gone, probably DFA'd. And because I don't think I'm going to be able to get value for them in a trade. And remember, I'm limiting myself to th it, I can only bring in three players in a trade. So I will probably be looking to give up players I'm getting value back for. And since I'm the Mets with a huge budget, I will probably look to DFA guys. So I'm going to work on some trades. I, my priority is, one, bring in a starting pitcher who can bump everybody down a notch, except DeGrom, obviously, maybe come in as a two. And that can also push Lucchese to the bullpen to give me another lefty arm there. I also want to trade for a lefty arm for the bullpen. So that way I would have Lucchese, Loop, and hopefully somebody who's better than both of them in the bullpen that probably subtr subtracts Familia and Batances from my bullpen the way I'm looking at it. And then I'd like to bring in, again, a defensive center fielder who can play all three positions, bat right-handed, be my fourth outfielder, and a catcher who has better catcher ability. I think those are the four moves I'm going to try to make between my three players I can acquire in a trade and the one free agent signing. But I will go uh, work on that, and we're going to come right back with the update on it. All right, so I made some trades. I have made the upgrades to the Mets that I wanted to make. Let's go over them real quick. I did break my own rule a little bit. I said I was going to acquire three players via trade and sign one free agent. Just with the season starting, I wanted to just have it all be trades so I didn't have to wait for guys to respond to offers, all that. So I, I made four trades, a trade for four players instead of one being a free agent. But I limited myself in who I could trade for, that being I was going to sign a catcher as a free agent, I was going to sign Tyler Flowers. But I went out and I basically allowed myself to trade for the worst 
catcher that had a 70 or above catcher ability. The worst, according to my scout. And it was this guy, Roberto Perez, who he's the Indians real life uh, catcher who had a really nice offensive season in 2019, but was terrible last year in the short season and had never really shown much before that. But 80 catcher ability, he's a leader. And so I just gave up some low level uh, prospect. I mean, a 35, Never. he's a corner outfielder. This guy, I mean, perhaps he's a better prospect than I know. He was signed by the by the Mets in 2019, Alexander Ramirez. So with where the Mets are in their competitive cycle right now, I think, you know, they, they'd be willing to trade a low-level prospect like this if they needed an upgraded catcher, which I did because I traded James McCann, as I was talking about. So Roberto Perez is in. He'll, he'll start a catcher. And then the other small upgrade we made to the offense is we brought Jake Marisnik back to New York. He thought he was leaving. He thought he was going to Chicago, but he's back. And we traded uh, Corey Oswald for him, minor league pitcher. Um, you know, didn't have any plans for this guy. So totally fine with dealing him. And again, the trade difficulty was set to three notches above normal. And then within that, I kind of allowed myself to make any trades. I didn't put any other rules in place like I might put in place for a normal franchise mode. So that's the up, upgrades to the offense. We got a better catcher. We've got Marisnik who can play all three outfield positions, which is good because our defense isn't amazing. And so Dom Smith now, he's backed up by Nimmo, who's a solid left fielder. But then Marisnik can back up in center and right and give us more versatility there. And I would make other changes to this team over the long haul if I was managing them. But with the for uh it's distracted by a low flying airplane um with the four moves i limited myself those are the two i cho- chose to make on offense on the pitching side of things blockbuster trade herman marquez out of colorado as he should be right get him on a winning team a competitive team this guy's a great pitcher so what did we give up for him and he's also a contract for four more years we gave up james mccann who had a lot of trade value and I was not as interested in, so he's out. We gave up Matt Allen, who is a really good prospect, number 50 prospect in baseball. Scout thinks he's a 55 overall potential. He was the third round pick of the Mets in 2019. He's a good pitching prospect, but again, he's 19. He's never pitched above low A. With where we're at now as the Mets, you know, we've got Lindor still with some prime seasons left. We've got a lot of really good players under contract willing to give up prospects for a guy like Marquez. And then we also gave up Yenzi Diaz, who uh, seems like a fine enough 24-year-old pitching prospect. I'm not sure he's ever going to reach the majors for my team. And Mark Vientos, who is the number 82 prospect in baseball, apparently. And he's a third baseman. That's the only place he's going to play. And I guess first base, too. Uh, Maybe he could fake it as a corner outfielder if he needed to. But a good power bat. And he is second round pick in 2017. So we give up two top 100 prospects and a starting catcher for Marquez. Certainly more than uh, the Rockies will probably get in real life, considering they can't even get anything for Nolan Arenado. But a pretty good deal. My assistant GM was not on board with it at all. I'll, I'll make that trade all day. I'm trying to win right now with these Mets. And then we also brought in... Oh, my! I just realized my... Uh, my manager reset my bullpen after I had set it up. We brought in Tanner Scott who will pitch in the back end of the bullpen. He was one of the best lefties available. Remember, I wanted a lefty. One of the best lefties available that was on a team that I was allowing myself to trade with. So, and did I, I trade with Cleveland. Hopefully I didn't break my rule there. I don't think they were on my list. But if they were, the Perez was a gimme. A mulligan, if you, I mean. So Scott is in. He'll pitch in the back end of the bullpen, and Luke Casey will be more a long man setup guy. Diaz will be Diaz, Scott, and May will be the three arms in the back of the bullpen. And I think this is a much deeper bullpen. It pushes guys like Giselman, Castro, Luke, Barnes down to middle relief. I would structure this bullpen differently if I was taking over this team long term. I'd like I said, I'd want to get in a stopper. I'd switch some stuff around. But with where they're at now, I think this bullpen is much improved. You got more versatility with the lefties. And when Cindergaard and Carrasco come back and you push Walker and Peterson possibly to the bullpen if everybody's healthy, I mean, that's a really good rotation, and I was already happy with where the lineup is. So if I was taking over the Mets and I could make four moves to improve them, that's what I would do. And they are projected for 91 wins, which is probably about what they're projected for um, in, or I should say predicted for, 
which is probably about what they're predicted for before my moves. But I like my moves. I think, you know, I've got two of the top pitchers now, and I think this team is in better shape to make a run this year. And, of course, there would be more improvements they could make. That's all for this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you next time.